welcome back to my channel thank you for stopping by today if it's your first time here you're actually welcome before we dive into today's um, video i just want to make a very special announcement yes guys i will be live on youtube on the 7th of april yes guys yes 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 i will be doing my live stream on the 7th of april which is my best day yes guys i'll be going live and i have something very special to share with you guys a special announcement something that i've been working on for for a very long time something that will be benefiting every one of us guys you are not ready for this yes guys don't allow this situation of the coronavirus hold us down I'm going to be going live and I'm making that special announcement. Yes, guys, it's going to be on the 7th of April. Tell a friend to tell a friend to join me on that day. I'm going to be updating you guys on the time. Right now, I don't have a specific time. So just look out for other videos because I'll be putting the time on there. Yes, guys, let's dive into today's video. So guys, as you must have seen from the topic of this video, I almost became a school dropout. Yes guys, it's a true life story and I decided to share this on this platform. This is one of the reasons why I created this channel and yeah, I had the leading to actually share with you guys and I know that one or two people will gain out of this. Please guys share this video because it's going to mean a lot to somebody. Somebody will run along with this video. Somebody will walk with this video guys. Yes guys and before I continue I want to use this video to say thank you to everyone who supports me. It means a lot to me. I'm an emotional person. When I see people who comment, who like, who come to watch, who keep coming to watch, I am grateful and I pray for you guys. Thank you so much. And yeah, before I keep on talking, guys, this is a true life story that I think is over 13 years right now. If I must say, I almost became a school dropout, guys. I almost became, I even actually packed my bag, my luggages back home at a point where it seems there is already a full stop in my life. And I want to share this out here because I know that most of you are at home right now saying to yourself that, ah, God, I think it's the end for me. It's not the end for you. I said same. I even said there is no God. I even said a lot, even worse than you must have said. But I want to encourage you that it doesn't matter the years that you've wasted. Guys, I wasted seven years. I usually say I wasted, but God, people that know said, God used that seven years to build you. Almost seven years, guys. So this is how it happened. It's going to be a lengthy one, but I will try and cut it short because I don't want this video to be very long. Guys, I'm uh, from a family where my father and my mother are educationists. Yes, my father finished from UNN, became a lecturer there, and before he got his banking job, my mother finished from UNN. She came she started teaching and she even retired teaching she retired last year so you could imagine the family that i'm coming from that it's a it's either you go to school or you do nothing so uh i knew god at a very early stage because i know somebody will say maybe because of my father is someone who believes so much in god guys i'm a catholic at a very tender age i already gotten my cat I was already going to catechism I was in block rosary I will I was in all these um corpus Christi when they do corpus Christi I'll be among those flag girls who were in a lot of things even me and my sister I and my sister we were into a lot of program in the Catholic Church but you know when the devil wants to act he doesn't care if you're a Christian or if you know God he just wants to mess himself up and that is what i call it he's messing himself up because i know who i belong to so guys i started very early because i entered secondary school at the age of 10 and at that point my mom is a no-nonsense woman she would be i used to tell my friends my mommy would time me if i go if i do the wrong thing she would she would tell me you are the first child and you need to show um, 
responsible traits to your to your younger ones. So you must be responsible. That adage that says spare the rod and spoil the child. Guys, it is true. Do not spare the rod. Parents out there, I was not spared and I thank God that my mother, my mother did not spare that, um, spare that rod. She used it on me and I thank God that I came out with God. I came out how I came out. So to cut the story short, I came from a home where my two parents were well educated but at the end of the day, the devil just wanted to mess himself up and this is why I want to share with you, I want to lift somebody up because after my secondary school, I went to a boarding house. My father and my mother will be the one that will tell you, you go and do your, you go and do your admission yourself, you will get it, you go to school. They don't care, like even my university till today, my mother does not know the, the location. All she knows that I finished, I came back and I served my country and I have my certificate to show you the home I'm coming from. So the devil wanted to mess me up after secondary school. I did very well. I've been starting my work result here. I did very well. I sat for my jam and I got 234. I can never remember, I can never forget that score. I got 234 and Obviously, at that time they were not doing post UME, so I knew that it was an automatic admission. I was either um, going for either pharmacy or medicine. I was a science student, but everything was not working out. I tried. Like my mother was into education, so she tried. It was not working. And at a point, I did the second time, and it did not work. And because they don't want me to stay home, I just continued studying and. They continue applying to other um, institutions, but everything that we did in my own case to be particular, everything was like the doors were shutting on on me. My mom said, "My first blood can never be useless." So, at a point, I when I was home, I had this gift of hair making. I didn't go to school for people that know that I make hair. I did not go to school to learn. I just used my mom, my siblings to actually. Um, and get better so she mommy would tell me okay and then what you do is you have to go um, to computer school i went to a computer school i finished i'm going to put my computer certificate here i finished i continued because my mom will tell you the the uh, an idle man is a devil's workshop so you cannot be idle i went on to learn how to make beats i would make beats for my mom my mom would go to work i'll get orders to make same beats so i was even making money while we was at home the thing is parents please support your children no matter that child that you look at and you say ah this one can never turn out to be somebody funny enough that child will be the best of those children every child is important every child i repeat Every child is important. So I continued and after every, every, my mom ended up telling me that I had to go purchase a form in either. I went to Unizik and Olabisi Onobanjo for those who know the place to apply and I got the two. But because of Ogun State was closer to Lagos, I had to choose Lagos. I will start my acceptance letter and everything. So we did that and at that time I had to pay a huge amount of money to do my post degree program and I did it and guys I was successful I passed but my name was not included yes you will say how did it happen I did not know I went to my advisor I told him sir I did well this is my result why is my name not out even if it is chemistry whatever course why am, why am I not included he's like what is happening Uche that's my name name what is happening so he helped and at the end of the day guys to cut the long story all short i packed my bags from the state and i went home without a certificate one year wasted to so those years that i've already stayed at home so while i got home my mom saw that this was not ordinary so as i said i'm a catholic but we had to go to other churches my mom's friends would come and be like oh you are the first daughter and the thing i already knew at the back of my mind as a first child there are there are forces for those who don't believe there are forces even to other children but particularly as a first child i knew that there are forces that are holding me but there are forces that would not want you to become who you want to become so they will always tell you in church you have to take it by force so i knew i was supposed to take this by force so I kept going to church. Any church that any of my mom's friend comes to tell me, trust me, I will be the first to 
go to that church that day and I kept going to churches and I was working for God. Another thing, don't just go to church and become a bench watcher. I was working for God. Even when things were not working, God, as I was working for God, I kept working. I will always be in the department, in the ushering department. For people that know me, for people that have gone to churches that have been, they know. I'll go to the ushering department, I'll go clean because I love cleaning. I'll go put things in order and yeah, I kept doing this. There's even a particular church that I had to go and that church, you have to go very early because the crowd was so much. So we as workers, we come as early as five guys. As early as five, I will be at church. If you can imagine when I leave, I leave my house, I'll be at church, and I will do things for God. But in all, I kept saying, God, I'm doing this and I know that you answer me one day. So, after I packed my bag to Lagos, my sister, my younger sister was already in school and she was doing well. She was in Adriquity. For those that know her, she was in Adriquity. She finished and um, she studied accounting and she was there. My mom would even send me, go and pay her school fees, go and give her her, month, her weekly allowance. I always pay it in the bank, but I was at home. But I never stopped serving my parents. Guys, my house, I turned to painter. I will always sleep everywhere clean. I will paint before my mother comes back. Anything that is not right, I will do it. Because of the upbringing, I just want to make my mom happy because she's been my support system. She's been somebody that she will always push me to do better. So in all, I was not idle. Is either I'm in church or I going to learn one thing or the other I was always doing something and I always do do not always say I'm doing for outsiders start from your home they say charity begins at home I made my parents happy I made my family happy people that know me my family are proud of me like when they look back my siblings they look up to me these days and I'm like no if Uche can do this I will do it so I'm just sharing guys just make sure that you just keep doing your best Serve God, serve God, he will answer. So afterwards, one day my mom came back and she was like, somebody introduced her to a school in London that let's apply. And before I even start that, I always go to church and every church I've attended will always tell me, you are going to go abroad, like your destiny is not in Nigeria. And I believe the word of God. I believe that those things, I take the word of God to heart so much. I'm that person, guys, that will always believe in the word of God. See, this, the spiritual controls the physical. And when the word of God comes, I and my mother will pray. And one day she came and she told me, Ada, let's just try. And she has gotten a school. Let's try. And that's how we tried that school. And I'll put the school in South London College, I'll put it here, and I got admission. If you know, at that time, 2009, they sent me my brochure to make sure that your address is right because the DHL, all those things, though I was sending them emails. Another thing, I start early with your kids, create that email. I was one person that my mother would not type email for me. I would do it myself. When it comes, she would make sure that you type, you send. So I was working, I was writing the school by myself and yeah and they sent my broke you i was so happy that oh finally i've gotten admission outside the country so they told me to pay my part payment which i did three thousand pounds as of then 2009 we paid and yeah i was elated i was happy and i just kept saving god i said finally god had answered me and to cut the story short guys after the payment, they sent me documents for me to go to the embassy. I went, I submitted, and after the days I was told to come back to get my visa, I went. Lo and behold, I got my refusal letter. Yes, guys, I got my refusal letter. And the word came as if the word was going to, like, it collapsed on me. And I couldn't even call my mom. I left that place with my refusal letter. And the first thing I did was I looked for a tree. I sat down, I checked my refusal letter and I said, I can't understand why they refused me. Like, there was no concrete reason. Like, so devil, you followed me again to this place. Why can't you allow me be? After years of staying, at that point, I think I was already either five years at home or thereabouts. So I'm like, Follow me enough. Why not let me be? And I was, I just called my mom. I told her, Mommy, it's refusal letter that I got. And she's like, Come home, don't worry, come home. And I was going home. And guys, I had 
attempted suicide. Yes, I attempted it because I thought I have lost it. Like, I became the black sheep. I just told myself that you're a waste of a child. Like, what's, what, what else? What do, you, what do you have to offer after everything? Paying 3,000 pounds for nothing. They even had to pay my visa fee and all that. And I, I, I just thought, God, I wish I could just jump or just, I was just attempting to commit suicide. My mother kept calling because she knows the kind of person I work with my mind. You know, she kept calling that, make sure you come, I'm waiting for you. There's, don't worry, just come home. And I went home. And by the time I got home, my mother just told me, don't worry. There is a light at the end of it all. Guys, there is a light. There is nothing that even the devil knows you are too much for him to handle. And that is why you have to have a personal relationship with God. See, your mother cannot pray for you. Your father, they will pray, but you have the, the power to do it yourself. I prayed. And at that point, I now became more hardworking. Like, I would save so much. I told myself that, and I, you had heard that firstborns do not do well. Well, I'm going to do well. I can't be here. I can't be a nobody. My sister is about to finish um, studies, and I'm here. And I need to set a pace for this uh, for my siblings. And I go home, and my mom looked at me and said, "You have a bright future, and don't worry, you will keep." So after everything. My mom called our lawyer and told her that this refusal letter she doesn't understand. So we went there, we talked to the solicitor, and he said, This is not even something to refuse you, that they have issues with the school. What's your business? So he just appealed for my visa. He, he went for appeal, and we we're waiting for them to grant me visa. Guys, months passed. Months, days passed. No, nothing was coming. And at that point, my mom, three, her 3,000 pounds was somewhere. Though they said they were going to take some amount of money, non-refundable money that they will refund back the because I already sent them the refusal letter that this is why they refuse. Because I don't understand that they said the school is not accredited. I don't even know what they just said, but I just sent it to them and they're like, okay, start the process of your refund and all that. And I started. So guys, I started and the devil said, Oh yeah, now come and collect your money. When the woman has told and worked 3,000 pounds. As of 2009, we go just like that. So my my people, we applied. Months passed. I will put when they even sent the money back. I applied for my refund and I think I got the refund in 2011. You could see that a year plus passed. But in all guys, I kept saying to myself, I will be somebody. What is that thing? Are you thinking that ah, this this coronavirus is making days pass by. I'm supposed to be somewhere. Or you're looking at yourself, oh, I'm already 30. How is my life going to be? It's a lie. When God will turn around the captivity of Zion, <laughs> it shall be like them that dreamt. <laughs> so, as I was saying, luckily enough, we had somebody there. So we called him that we've applied for a very long time. And I'm not getting... Um, my money, what is happening? So he said he was going to go to the school. Luckily enough, he went and they refunded it back. Though they took, instead of 250 pounds, they took 500 pounds and refunded us 2,500 pounds. And that was how I was at home again. No home. And I already had it in mind that I was not going to study in Nigeria because at the end of the day, I keep going to churches and the prophecy keeps coming that you're not supposed to be here. So one beautiful day, my mommy came back. She said she met her, a parent, a friend. She's a friend that she said that her daughter had gone to Canada and she asked of my own admission. And she was like, No, that I didn't get it. I was refused and all that. So she said, Ah, really? Okay. That the agent that helped her, obviously, that she can be of help to us. Mommy said she's willing. Immediately, they got the number. My mom. Came home and told me this good news and yeah i was happy and i was having mixed feelings because i know it's not about getting admission it's about am i going to get the visa that is the word am i going to get the visa so we tried and i want to use this opportunity to tell you guys be careful of those who are around you it's very important companies that you keep like me i'm a mother now so when i see that you are not adding and you are not going to my spirit you know this this thing about 
people that you come in contact with is very important. For those who don't understand that this spiritual thing is very important, it is. I have seen a lot. I have all that. I'm just sharing this little with you guys. So I went, went to meet with the agent, and the agent was like, ah, like I can't go to Canada because I'm already 21. Hey, guys, <laughs> my life, I'm like, oh my god. Because of the woman understands the feeling, she said, but there is a place you can go to and they don't even have restriction to age. I'm like, when we said, oh, where? We are open to any that is good. She said, North Cyprus. And that was how my North Cyprus came all about. And yes, it came. Before you knew it, I got my, um, what's it called? She applied and I got my admission. And she was so particular about me because of the stories and everything that my mother must have told her that she actually told her and she said no problem madam she's going to get it and we went we we're three and this beautiful agent was so particular she said she knows those boys will get it because of the age and all that you know most students actually call me at the age of 17 and i was already 21 so she was like and she knows she wants to know if I was granted and luckily enough guys I got the visa and that was my turning point after almost seven years guys I did not even include this at a time my mom came and said if you don't get your admission this year with your wife you have to receive because your wife will become God and I'm like God is this the way my life will turn out to at a point I even told my mom mommy is it not better I marry? Is it, am I going to lose out here and lose? Mommy told me, no. You will get a degree and then you marry. You can see me. I got a degree and that is what is keeping us. So I just want to share. It might not be education. It might be that you are doing business and it seems it's not working. It might be that, ah, life has come to a full stop. Guys, my life came to a full stop for seven good years. Like I look back now and it seems as if those years never happened. If you, the funny part is that sometimes I don't even remember. I don't even remember that I wasted seven years. Today I have a degree. I'm going to do my masters. My father did masters, not to talk of me. I don't care. I don't look at the years anymore. Don't look at your year. Don't look at oh. I'm already 21. I'm already 22. I'm out of school. I'm not yet. I'm not gained admission. Who is that person that will speak when God has not spoken? Use this time to build yourself. You are at home now, and you are saying to yourself, the, the world has come to stand still. What is my life going to look like? I urge you guys, please build yourself. You have that built, inbuilt kit. I know. Each and every one of us has something that God has placed in us. Grow it right now. Build it. You will not regret it. Don't look at those years. Don't look at your stay. Save God. Guys, I was serving God. You see, people that see me think they know everything. I tend to put, put in things. I don't, I don't tell people me. Like I wanted to create a platform where I will come and tell you. It's not everything that you voice out. Let grow for people to know. I'll be sharing other stories here that people don't believe. Levels that I've come to in my life and I'm like, God, why? I know where I'm coming from. I was born with a silver spoon, but it's not every time that silver spoon remains. It did not remain. I walk forward for who I am. I'm still walking. What is that thing that you have in your hand that you say is too small? Start small, guys. That your parents that you look down on and say, ah, she's really disturbing me. Don't worry, serve that spirit. And you see that God will use that avenue to do something for you. I'm a living witness. When I show, if I show you my Wayek, and when I gained, and when I finished my BSc, you will see the length of how I waited. Guys, there is nothing God cannot do. I'm going to put in my Wayek, and I'm going to put in when I Again, when I finished my BSc to show you that it is not about timing see when God's time comes it will look as if everything I finished school as I was saying she got the admission when I got the visa she told me ah 
um, Uchi, you are going to pay one year before we went for the visa. We're going to pay for the one year. How we can calculate this year is to calculate two semesters, we'll call it a year. That £2,500 that my mom, they refunded back, was what I used to pay my dormitory fee in 2012 before you come to Northern Cyprus. You like secure an accommodation because they were the ones that even came to pick us from the airport so we paid with that money like it was we we're so okay that i paid my tuition for a year that's two semesters and i paid my dormitory fee for two semesters with that money and when god will have it people came out for me this one will give my uncle my uncle Reverend father chibi he will come he'll say oh yeah ada take this laptop this one will come and give me this one. People were, my family was on get friends. Is it not when God has said it is time? Who is that person that says it's not time? Tell the person that God has not started. Have that secret corner where you go and pray. When things happen, so now husband will come back and tell me, ah, babe, this is what happened. I'll tell you, don't worry. Know your secret place. Go serve God. See, you can't. You, you see, I don't know what you serve, but see, God, me, even when I came to Cyprus, when we said, Ah, ne, it's your neighbor, na, a big and I serve God. Have you in, in English, have you found where you will serve God? Because she knew that it was my serving God that brought me to where I am. You know, firstborns, people that are out there, Africans, we know, firstborns, we tend not to do well. But look at me today, my siblings look up to me, and I'm happy for where I am today and I want to cheer somebody out don't commit that suicide <laughs> if you commit that suicide that brighter path you will not see it don't tell yourself that you are nobody keep moving I don't care if you are 40 years I don't care if you are even they told me 21 years cannot go to Canada but if I want to go to Canada today I will go just tell yourself that so far you have God you will go and you will supersede so where that devil say you cannot be. I talk to devil sometimes. I say, you want to come again? Eh? You have no place here. The time that you have done, it's enough. Oh yeah, pack your bags and leave. I tell devil like that. Get to the point where you speak to God yourself. There is nothing. You see, work and God, they, they work hand in hand. Don't call God without working. Do your work and leave it for God. And see God in action. So I just came out here to share some more. Share this video. Someone needs to run with this. Someone needs to hear this. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what people. People wrote me off. My sister finished university before I came to Northern Cyprus. Yes, four years she finished. But look at me today. I did not see it like that because I knew I was going somewhere. And parents, please, be support system for your children. Teach that your child well. Don't spare the road. Though. I'm here. So mommy does not know the school I went to. She did not. She doesn't even know the location. All she knows that I came back to Nigeria and I did my service. I brought husband back home. I have a son. My mother does not know my school, but I am who I am through the grace of God. And I always pray this prayer for people that I love. I say, let God do what no man can do. If you can put that quote. It's my quote. I, I wake up, I, I sleep and wake up in it. Do, I tell God, do what no man can do for me. And he has been doing it. And he will do it for you. So guys, please get up. Don't feel that it's, it's, it's the end. It's not the end. God is just starting with you. And you see God in action. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys in my next video.